Uh, this is Shui with a review of the uh, Adidas Tracy McGrady signature from 2004, the TMAC 3. It's the third signature. If you remember, the second signature was worn by LeBron James during his uh, run in high school. Everyone thought he was going to continue wearing Adidas. Adidas had the chance to sign him, but then uh, the, the corporate money-hungry morons did not take the solid advice and the st strategy that was introduced by a man named Sonny Vaccaro who uh, knew these players much better than they did and they failed to capture LeBron by offering him uh, like a, a lot less zeros a couple of less zeros in terms of the contract they should have offered LeBron because Sonny knew what Nike would offer and what's needed to uh, sign LeBron so yeah there you go another failure story for Adidas but thankfully they signed uh, quite quite a superstar in Tracy McGrady. I love the logo. It's got the three stripe of the Adidas and the T and the M, the T-Mac initials, and it looks like a rim and a net. Um, it's a nice little logo. Uh, in the 2000s, early 2000s to mid or late 2000s, the, all the rage was having the midsole covered up with the, uh, with the upper material. So the midsoles were all covered up and this was sort of like the sleek design that everyone went for. I suppose it provided some level of... Uh, stability uh, durability i guess because when the midsole is all glued and exposed they might bust so that chance is uh, neutralized but then uh, there will be twice as more twice or a lot more pressure placed on the glue area from the upper to the outsole so all in all it's it didn't make much of a difference maybe probably the reason why we don't see this kind of design these days they went back to the drawing board and they're sticking to the classic uh setup that works well so the T-Max, the, the first, second, and the third one, they do have a bit of a continuation of the design in terms of uh, it feels like um, a slight evolution inching forward instead of just scrapping the whole design and coming up with a brand new one. So I think I like the continuation of design in the T-Max. Uh, for a size US 9, it weighs about 415 grams and it feels much lighter than that on foot. So uh, that's something you could command a shoe that's almost two decades old this is of course a retro version and i think they've been retro many times and they might continue to do that and they did have a t-make millennium which had a boost midsole instead of the typical ev or adi print and they also have a new t-make pro tour version with a bounce midsole so i would love to see this design being uh, reused uh, as maybe light strike that will be wonderful the the the, the new team with the bounce midsole is hard to find the price is going through the roof because it's highly in demand and it's not released in many countries it's not available here in korea that's for sure <clears throat> first of all it's uh it's 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 different from the typical adidas models because usually it is adidas has this huge empty toe box dead space area but the team 3 fits just nice it hugs the top of your foot nicely without giving it too much space and this although as narrow as it may look it is pretty roomy in terms of width so for wide footers it's pretty friendly average joes i would say go true to size uh if you have really narrow foot and you like really tight fit you might want to go down half a size i love this little alligator skin scheme and uh, everything is a little bit shiny and glittery when it's the early 2000s so this carries with it that tradition as well the tongue is neoprene with a little bit of padding inside, quite breathable and nice. Uh, overall, it's quite waterproof, so I like wearing this in the rain. It's not exactly the most breathable shoe, but it's it keeps the rain out, so it's nicely nicely shielded. Um, and uh, the it's it's pretty much of a low cut that almost inch towards becoming somewhat of a low mid cut, a bit of an in betweener. Uh, it's got nice little padding all around, so there's no iffy little parts that pokes or scratches your skin so that's nice uh, the heel cup is very prominent inside it clutches and gets the job done nicely uh, it's got this plate that runs all the way through the heel and the midfoot area and all the way to uh, closer to the forefoot so it provides great uh, torsion uh, stability and also uh, it's supposed to provide some kind of a lateral uh, anti-inversion strapping mechanism here but it, it's not exactly great it's not the narrowest shoe but it's not wide enough to be dubbed an outrigger or have a wide enough base to provide that secure 
secure anti-inversion setup like some of the shoe you see like the hardens i suppose uh, it's not crazy unstable but it's not the most stable shoe in terms of lateral stability but it's it's nice it's pretty low to the ground the cushioning is very very minimal and low but it feels quite adequate uh compared to the crazy quick twos similar but better uh compared to the gill zeros a whole lot better a world of difference because that thing is stiff as uh, stiff as a thousand year old chewing gum and that hardened four of course it's light strike it's a uh, tech upgrade so that's definitely better than this but it it does not fall far behind it does not feel like a shoe that was released with a tech from 20 years ago it feels very similar to the little little ones the little ones actually had a very thick insole so once you wear the insole out you will feel there's very minimal uh, added print cushioning on the forefoot and the heel for the tmac 3s even if they released the reissue version with a very thin ortholite insole i'm pretty sure the original ones had a thicker pu insole but even without the insole it does feel like there's a minimal but adequate level of cushioning i heard they put some extra added print on the forefoot to provide that ad additional cushioning and on the heel you can certainly feel that cushioning working although it looks like it's got very angular 90 degrees uh, rigidity here but it's it doesn't have the double thud. It slides, glides nicely, and compresses well, surprisingly, uh, despite what the eye catches here. Um, and yeah, cushioning is not too bad, especially considering the uh, Adidas series, the rigidity they've had in terms of all the basketball shoe line they had in the early 2000s. This must have been a godsend for Adidas fans who wanted some plush cushion shoe. Um, I look forward to Adidas retroing this, protroing this with maybe Light Strike or something like that. I guess that's a probability. Uh, this shoe has been retroed many times, and like many Adidas models in the past, I think you can look forward to this being retroed again. And if they do, you might want to give it a try. This is something that stood the test of time, and it does not fall behind in terms of the 21st century Adidas uh, basketball sneakers. And of course, uh, something memorable because was an important i don't know if it was an important chapter but it was a chapter in uh, tracy mcgrady's career um yeah uh, uh i think among the tmx series this is one of the better ones out there uh once again i do look forward to um a tech upgrade pro tour version of this the outsole is pretty interesting it's pretty durable and it's not super sensitive to dust um it's pretty impressive compared to so the copy paste control c control v lazy traction heavy herring bone traction pattern that they give that don't really uh, resist dust don't really provide ad uh, adequate traction